Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, if you can be so kind, take a second to uh, like, share, subscribe, come aboard uh, into this never-ending journey of technical analysis and trying to figure out what the market's going to do next. Uh, today, obviously, the big story was uh, FOMC. I don't think there was a surprise today that uh, rates were unchanged. The surprising part of what we saw about today's session was the language in Jerome Powell's uh, testimony, or actually his uh, Q&A. Initially, he said potential rate hikes are on the table. The market didn't like that news, and initially the market started uh, coming on down. And then to follow with, uh, you know what, forget about the rate hike situation. We also potentially could be looking at three rate cuts for this year. I mean, what are we doing here, right? First, we're talking about rate hikes on the table. Now we're talking about three potential rate cuts. And obviously, the market liked that uh, news a lot better. And if you look at the QQQs, just as one, you know, one little proxy, uh, they just went out of their minds with those comments, uh, the Dow finished up 400 points. The Nasdaq uh, finished up uh, 200 points. A lot of the names that we've been talking about for a while, they you know, really broke out today with some very, very big aggressiveness or are very close to breaking out of previous ranges. And if that wasn't uh, more fuel to the fire, well, MU had earnings after the close and MU shattered their earnings. They really did. And the stock is surging, as you can imagine. Uh, every other uh, semiconductor is rallying with us to put more fuel on the bull's uh, fire. Now, again, you're going to have a, a whole group of people turning around. So, well, this market doesn't make sense. It's still uh, overbought. It's still over this. Again, guys, I I've been saying this for 300 years in a row now. Okay, stop thinking. Stop overthinking. Stop trying to. Uh, dissect every single headline. The market is the market. It's going to do whatever it wants. Um, you know, again, if the market if the market went to all time highs during the pandemic, what makes this you know less rational than that? You know, if you told me two weeks uh, into the pandemic that we we're going to be at all time highs a month later, right? That doesn't make sense. But yet here we are. So don't try to figure it out. All you need to know is above the fifty day is bullish. Above the fifty day is bear. Below the fifty day is bearish. And you can go all the way down, right? All the way down the line. What happened? We finally broke above the 50-day moving average. And this is going all the way back to uh, November of 2023. And here we are, one of the greatest rallies uh, definitely in my career that's spanning now north of 25 years, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, when we start losing the 50-day moving average, in this case, it's what, 429? So we're far, you know, we're, we're not even close to that. We're close to the highs than we are to the 50 day, just keep on enjoying it, right? Keep on enjoying it, keep on riding it. Try to find stocks that are coming up, coming above their ranges on intermediate channels. Don't chase stocks that are up two, three, four weeks in a row. Just be kind to your account, okay? Learn how to walk, learn how to crawl, learn how to take baby steps in your approach and you'll start seeing some pretty good results when you don't force the issue, when you don't start forcing uh, your development. And that's kind of where we are right now. We're in a very, very aggressive bull market. Uh, even the weak names are, you know, fighting, uh, you know, finding their footing. Uh, no three stocks were weaker in the last month than Apple, right? Then Apple, it finally woke up. Then Google, right? It finally woke up. And last but not least, that we've been talking about uh, the Tesla potential trade back up now for a couple of days has been Tesla. You know, Tesla had an incredibly rough time in the last several months. I don't think anybody uh, has denied it. The majority of our trades, um, ever since it lost the 50-day moving average, has been to the downside. Um, this is finally, it's getting a little bit of footing. It finally had a really, really big move. If you guys remember on Monday, 
It raised prices on their Model Y, I believe, in Europe. Yesterday, it had a res day, and today closed over the 10-day supply. And again, if you look at the options market today, they were betting pretty heavy for the weekly 180s, which correlates pretty nicely uh, to the 20-day supply. Again, by no means is Tesla out of the water yet, but this is now in the middle of a good tradable bounce. And I believe if everything goes well, we should see at least the test of that 180 level uh, in the next day or so, hopefully uh, for tomorrow. Uh, Amazon, right? Amazon, again, we'll go through the individual names. I just want to go through uh, the stocks. Amazon, if you guys remember a couple of days ago, we started talking about the reclaiming back of the five-day moving average. Now Amazon is, you know, stone throws away from uh, the March highs. Looks great. Uh, NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA has been kind of all over the place in the last week or so. It's going up, it's going down on the event, and now it's kind of stabilizing. With this news on Micron's earnings, as it possibly finally starts uh, getting above the Monday's highs and starts waking up, why not, right? Why not? Again, the, the point is follow the leaders, right? Follow the leaders. When the leaders wake up, that's a good thing. When the ladders wake up, that's a really, really good thing because it tells you the sellers are very comfortable in this market. Give you a perfect example today, right? AMD lost its 50-day moving average, okay? That's a very, very bearish thing. And the stock got hit. And again, we'll get to the pivots in a second. The stock literally went from 77 all the way down to 74. But just to give you an idea how strong the market is, AMD reclaimed its 50-day moving average at 77 and closed uh, almost at the high of the day. So the bulls are definitely uh, still in control. You might have your one, two days uh, worth of selling, but until we get below uh, the 50-day moving average, it's going to be very, very tough to convince me or convince any professional trader that the, the sentiment has changed. You might have a little bit of narrative change from day to day, but it, but the sentiment is still very, very strong, very, very bullish. Uh, Chipotle, right? Maybe the stock will finally start to being tradable again, okay? Uh, I haven't traded Chipotle in, in years. If anybody has traded Chipotle, you'll know the stock trades, a dollar, two dollar spreads. They announced uh, a pretty big, I think it was a 50 for one, uh, 50 for one split. It'll get it down to roughly into the 60s. Maybe the stock will finally become tradable because it has not for absolute years. If you trade options, even the options market, the spreads are wide. Again, I'm an equities guy and, and I haven't traded this thing in a very, very long time. But now that they announced the split, hopefully this thing will start uh, to give us a little bit more liquidity a lot more user friendly in the name because the company is great. I mean, everybody loves uh, the product. My kids go over; they love Chipotle, especially uh, especially after uh, after you know uh, practices or training. So uh, you guys love it as well. Um, so again, it's great, great uh, fast food. I don't even know if you call it fast food. I guess it's in that genre. But hopefully, the split now uh, will make it a lot uh, more better. Uh, to trade. So let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about it. Uh, QQQs are holding up very, very well. All-time highs, uh, 448.60s. Again, is it going to get there tomorrow? Probably not. Uh, but again, this is now the highest close in this whole formation above the $44 level. Uh, it's trading, you know, it's trading high. It's trading after hours, you know, up about, you know, up about uh, 20, 30 cents or so. Uh, but the point is we are still, the trajectory is still uh, going to the upside, you have the IWM uh, that, again, held the 50-day moving average. Is kind of what we talked about. Over the 50 is bullish. Uh, below the 50 is bearish. It held the 50, rallied back up today, not that far away from all-time highs. Uh, the spies continue to go higher. Even the banks today, uh, look at the banks today. You know, Citibank, uh, Bank of America, right? JP Morgan. This is when you know the market is good, when the banks are actually leading, right? That's a very, very big deal. So good, healthy market, really good, healthy market. Don't try to fight it. Don't try to get cute with it. Uh, when there's nothing to do, sit on your hands. When the market rests, you rest. And today was a perfect example. Uh, the morning, nothing was going on. I mean, literally nothing was going on. I, I, I literally took one trade in the morning. I lost money in the trade. Of all things, I bought Oracle, right? I bought Oracle in the morning. Couldn't figure it out. I bought Oracle in the morning. It went up about 70 cents or so came back in, came back up, and just went down. Just did, did, did absolutely nothing. Does it look high? Yeah, but I couldn't figure out why I lost money in the trade. Things changed towards the end of the day. Um, so things kind of worked out a little bit better, but it was kind of very, very weird. And all of a sudden, once Powell uh, stopped talking, everything just started going absolutely nuts. And here are 
uh, the pivots uh, for today. Tesla, again, uh, 174.72 needs to build. Here is Tesla, finally got above the 174.72 area, closed a little bit lower than 76, to put in a high today of 76 and a quarter. If it starts confirming tomorrow, today's ranges, we should see a move into the 180s. So that was good, continues to be good. Uh, NVIDIA didn't confirm uh, 905.50 in the regular session. Right now it's trading around 908 after hours. Uh, Microsoft went absolutely nuts, nuts today. Uh, 421.67 uh, needs to build. Here it was Mr. Softy. It took out the 421.67, confirmed the 423 pre-market highs and traded all the way up to 426. If this thing confirms today's channel tomorrow, we should see uh, the highs that it made from last Friday. If you guys remember last Friday, gave us a really, really big uh, breakout trade there. So great move there on Microsoft. Meta went nuts as well, okay? Meta, 499.70 pre-market highs needs to build. Here was Meta. Meta traded all the way up to, I believe it traded all the way up to 408. Yeah, 408.20s was the high. Uh, this thing still looks higher. Uh, Oracle, yeah, go figure. I lost money in Oracle today. I can't figure out why, but I lost money in some Oracle today. Oh, I lost a dollar, but still, I just couldn't figure out why. Uh, hymns, you guys remember we were talking about hymns? Hymns, hers, they, all the pronouns. Well, him, her, they, it, us, their, they, and every other pro town you could possibly find broke out today. Nice move on hymns. 1582 uh, needs to build. Here is hymns, right? 1582 needs to build. Here comes hymns. Hymns went up, it went up basically about a buck. Still looks higher. Uh, $19 uh, April calls hit. Looks good as well. Uh, hymns, 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 hymns. Amazon, again, another way. You can see everything just woke up here towards the end of the day. Uh, what Amazon 176.60 needs to build. Here was Amazon. Took out the 176.60, traded all the way up to 78.50s. A uh, really strong move there. That looks higher as well. Carvana went nuts today. Carvana 83.06 needs to build. Again, everything went nuts, folks. I think you get it by now. Uh, everything went nuts towards the end of the day. Uh, here is Carvana, took out the 8306, traded all the way up to 86 and a half. I saw some 90 calls uh, coming in for that name. DraftKings saw some uh, $50 short-term expiration calls. Uh, 4562 needs to build on DraftKings. Here was DraftKings, took out the 4562. This is the highest close in the whole formation, went up about 80 cents from the breakout level. So that was very, very strong. And AMD got killed right? Got killed. I missed, uh, it got killed at the, it got killed at lunchtime. I missed it. I missed the 50 day breakdown. It went from 77 all the way down to 74. I caught the rejection though, which was, which was actually very, very good. It got back to 76 twenties. It got stopped. I shorted it there when got down to the 75s and change. I made some covers about 75%. The rest I got stopped out break even. Uh, but again, for all you guys who caught the natural breakdown, great job there. And I believe that is it. So a lot of action here after uh, the Fed. Uh, the market continues to look strong. Again, the leaders continue to lead, guys. Don't be smart. Don't try to overthink. Don't try to be uh, a superhero. Just go with the wave instead of going against it. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great night. I wish you guys all nothing but health, happiness, and future, uh, future prosperity. And with God's help, we'll do it again tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Have a good night.